Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. PM Modi inaugurates Mega Tribal Festival, says India's diversity grandness standing tall. Pakistan Finance Bill proposes heavy taxes. Consumers brace for new wave of price spirals. And 10 arrested for looting and arson during transport workers' protest in Nepal. Now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the country's mega tribal festival Adi Mahotsav in New Delhi on Thursday and said he feels India's diversity and its grandness have come together and are standing tall today. The 11-day long festival features exhibition come sale of tribal handicraft, handlooms, jewellery, bamboo products, tribal cuisine and much more. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday inaugurated the Adi Mahotsav, a mega tribal festival in capital New Delhi and paid floral tributes to tribal freedom fighter Birsa Munda. The Adi Mahotsav, which celebrates the spirit of tribal culture, crafts, cuisine, commerce and traditional art, is an annual initiative of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. The Prime Minister interacted and visited the stalls showcasing tribal artifacts and products of different states. In his address, he said, I feel India's diversity and its grandness have come together and are standing tall today. The government is making efforts to reach out to the people who have been unreached for a long time, PM Modi added. The festival will feature exhibition come sale of tribal handicrafts, handlooms, paintings, jewellery, cane and bamboo products, pottery, tribal cuisine and much more. 21st ka Bharat सबका साथ सबका विकास के मंत्र पर चल रहा है जिससे पहले दूर सुदूर समझा जाता था अब सरकार दिल्ली से चलकर उसके पास जाती है Over 500 tribal artists from 20 states will also give cultural performances as part of the event which will go on till February 27 and will be based on their rituals harvest, festivals and martial art forms. An infiltration bid was foiled in a joint effort by Indian security forces and local police along the line of control in Kupwara and India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday night. The Indian Army in a statement said the security officials have recovered what like stores from the slain terrorist. An infiltration bid was foiled in a joint effort by Indian security forces and local police along the de facto borderline of control in Kupwara in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday night. The Jammu and Kashmir police and Indian army confirmed the report and said one infiltrating terrorist was neutralized. In a statement, defense spokesperson said the troops detected movement of three terrorists along the Indian side of LOC. An intense firefight ensued, resulting in elimination of one terrorist while grievously injuring the other, he added. He further said that the injured terrorist along with other managed to escape under the cover of darkness. The search operation later in the day led to the recovery of one AK series rifle, one light automatic weapon, six magazines, two grenades and large quantity of warlike stores. इतला जो है वो पहले से ही एक मौसूल हुई थी कि ऐसी एक टेम्प्ट जो है वहाँ से दुश्मन जो कर सकता है और जो हमारा अपना मैकेनिज्म होता है चाहे वो आर्मी है या पुलिस है उसका एक जॉइंट मैकेनिज्म होता है उसके तहत ये कार्रवाई की गई मरे हुए शख्स की शनाकत अभी तक मरे हुए टेररिस्ट की शनाकत नहीं हुई India has long accused Pakistan its terrorists to infiltrate across the border, especially in the Kashmir Valley. However, Pakistan denies this allegation and says it only provides diplomatic and moral support to the people of Kashmir. 
In news from Pakistan, amid record high inflation, the Pakistan government from Thursday increased the price of petroleum products, adding to the woes of common Pakistanis. The move by the finance ministry comes after the government proposed new rates of taxes in a supplementary budget aimed at the release of critical bailout funds from the IMF. Pakistan government on Wednesday increased the price of petrol by 22.20 rupees, taking the price to 272 rupees per litre. Prices of diesel and kerosene were also raised by 17.20 and 12.90 rupees respectively. According to Finance Ministry statement, the hike which will be effective from Thursday was done due to the plummeting value of the country's currency. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishak Dar also laid a supplementary finance bill before the parliament on Wednesday, which proposed to impose new taxes of 170 billion rupees to minimize the fiscal deficit. In the supplementary bill, government has increased the general sales tax rate on the import of luxury items from the existing 17% to 25% while the overall general sales tax rate had also been raised from 17% to 18%. Pakistan government also proposed to impose a 20% or rupees 50,000 tax, whichever is higher, on one business or a first-class air ticket, besides proposing a 10% advance tax on the bills of marriage ceremonies. It was also suggested to increase the federal excise duty on cigarettes and sugary drinks, whereas on cement, the duty was raised from Rs 1.5 per kg to Rs 2 per kg, Dar added. He said new revenue measures would not affect the poor segments of society and announced proposed a Rs 40 billion increase in the budget of the Benazir Income Support Programme. The South Asian country is locked in negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for the release of critical bailout funds and with roughly enough reserves to meet only three weeks of imports. Pakistan is looking to increase revenue despite multi-decade high inflation of 27%. Well, more news from Pakistan. Pakistan's former Premier Imran Khan has asked the country's President Arif Alvi to institute an immediate inquiry against former Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa for violating his oath of office repeatedly as the Army Chief. This comes days after Khan in an interview blamed that Bajwa had a role in his ouster as Prime Minister in April last year. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has asked President Arif Alvi to initiate an immediate inquiry against ex-Army Chief Retired General Kamar Javed Bajwa for violating his oath of office repeatedly as the Army Chief. Local media reported that Khan, in a letter dated February 14, listed four instances in which Bajwa allegedly violated the Constitution. PTI leader Shireen Mazari shared on Twitter the pictures of the said letter. Imran Khan has written that General Bajwa had admitted to journalist Javed Chaudhary in a column published on February 9 that we considered Imran Khan to be dangerous to the country if we continue to stay in power. Khan added that it would be critical to ascertain from General Bajwa that who did he refer to as we. Among the claims, Khan has also referred to a YouTube vlog which claimed Bajwa had tapes of then PM Imran Khan's conversations with him. Imran Khan, the chairman of PTI party, said Bajwa also made his Moscow visit controversial during the time Russia-Ukraine conflict erupted as he did not keep a neutral stance. The development comes days after Khan, in an interview to Voice of America, blamed that Bajwa also had a role in his ouster as prime minister in April last year. Moving on, Sri Lanka on Thursday increased electricity prices by 66% in a move that the government hoped it would persuade the International Monetary Fund to provide urgent support for its crisis-stricken economy. The scale of the price rise is likely to heap misery on Sri Lankans already struggling with inflation running around 54%. Sri Lanka increased electricity prices by 66% on Thursday in a move that the government hoped would persuade the International Monetary Fund IMF to provide urgent support for its crisis-stricken economy. The scale of the price rise is likely to heap misery on Sri Lankans already struggling with inflation running at 54.2%, but the government can barely able to afford vital imports due to a lack of foreign currency reserves and has to convince international creditors 
that it will follow sound fiscal policies. Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said that the government knows this will be hard on the public, especially the poor, but Sri Lanka is caught in a financial crisis and the government has no choice but to move towards cost-reflective pricing. He also said the price increase would help the power ministry offset the gap caused by the cessation of government subsidies and also help the government better manage its long-term fuel contracts. Sri Lanka is in the midst of its worst financial crisis in seven decades and must put its massively indebted public finances in order to unlock a $2.9 billion IMF loan that was agreed upon last September. And in news from Nepal, the Nepal police on Wednesday rounded up a total of 10 people for their alleged involvement in Monday's arson and looting incident when a protest by transport workers turned violent. The police said that among the accused, six were arrested for arson and four for looting. The Nepal police on Wednesday rounded up a total of 10 people for their alleged involvement in the arson and looting incident of Monday when a protest by transport workers turned violent. Among the 10 accused, six were arrested on arson and four on looting, the police said. During the protest carried out by transport workers, the angry mob entered the Lhotse Mall of the new bus park area, looted various electronic items from shops and vandalized the properties. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has directed national security agencies to investigate the incident and take action against the culprits. The protest erupted after transport workers argued that the new traffic rules are not in the interest of public transportation complaining that the traffic police has been charging unfair fines even for parking their vehicles on the roadside. And hundreds of sports enthusiasts thronged India's ski resort town of Gulmarg this week to enjoy winter games amid snowfall. Gulmarg, at an altitude of around 8,500 feet, is a well-known tourist destination for winter sports activities such as snow skiing and sledge and cable car rides. Take a look. Sports lovers from across India gathered in ski resort town of Gulmark in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory this week to take part in winter games. The third edition of Khelo India National Winter Games, which concluded on Tuesday, saw around 1,500 participants compete in ice talk, hockey, skating, bandy, bobsleighing, ski mountaineering and giant slalom and cross-country games. एक बहुत अच्छा इनिशिएटिव है लोकल स्कीइंग और लोकल विंटर स्पोर्ट्स को प्रमोट करने के लिए आई मीन लाइक पहले नेशनल्स जो भी नेशनल इवेंट होता था स्कीइंग या विंटर गेम्स में वो काफी टाइम से जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में नहीं हो रहा था मनाली या उत्तराखंड में हो रहा था तो खेलो इंडिया का जो इनिशिएटिव है ये अच्छा बहुत अच्छे से बूस्ट कर रहा है जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में विंटर गेम्स को मैं अभी मैं पाँच किलोमीटर में पार्टिसिपेट करने वाले हूँ और भगवान ने चाहा तो मेडल भी लेंगे और यहाँ के अच्छा लग रहा है क्योंकि यहाँ पे वेदर भी अच्छा है ट्रैक्स भी अच्छे हैं और स्नो जो स्नो है वो भी बहुत सारी है गुलमर्ग एट एन ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑफ एटी फीट इज अ वेल नोन टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन फॉर विंटर स्पोर्ट्स एक्टिविटीज सच आर स्नो बोर्डिंग स्लेज एंड केबल कार राइड्स एंड स्नो स्कींग Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.